of autumn. A cold grey mist hung in the silent air. Wilfred Toadflax hurried towards the weaver's cottage. He'd just woken up from an exciting dream about exploring. A dream which reminded him of an old book the weavers had on a shelf in their workroom. Blankets. I'm just finishing number five. So this one will make six. Oh, it's a shame we couldn't match the yellow. But we've used the last of Great Grandpa Blackthorn's special lichen. And no other dye comes close. I don't know how we'll ever find more. It grows somewhere in the mountains. But Great Grandpa Blackthorn was the only one who was ever able to find it. Oh, uh, come in. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello, Wilfred. Have you come to help? Huh? Help? We're making blankets for the voles up in the high hills. The moths have made holes in all their quilts. Then no time to make new ones before the cold weather comes. Oh, um, what would you like me to do? Well, nothing really. We've nearly finished. Oh, good. Um, may I uh, please read Daring Explorers of Old Hedge Days? <laughs> Again? Here it is. One of the most famous explorers of old hedge days was Sir Hogweed Whorehound. His greatest adventure started when he set off alone to look for gold in the high hills. Hello! Hello, Grandpa! There you are, Papa. Nearly ready. Flax is working on the last blanket. Good, good. Because we must leave soon if we're going to get to the high hills before dark. It's a very long way. The high hills? You're going to the high hills? Oh, Mr. Apple, may I go too, please? Oh, oh, it's not for me to say, Wilfred. We'll have to ask your parents. Oh, may I go too, please? Well... Please, 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 please! All right, you may go as long as you're helpful and do as Mr. Apple says. I will, Mum. Thank you! Whistle, fire sticks, a ground sheet. What do you need a kettle for? As Sir Hogweed Whorehound says, a good explorer takes in his trusty pack all he needs to survive an adventure. <laughs> survive an adventure? You're only taking blankets to the voles. Yes, but we're going into the high hills. I'm off! Is Wilfred coming? Here I am! Wilfred, do you really need all that equipment? It looks terribly heavy. Why don't you leave some of it behind? But I, I must take everything. How can I be an explorer without my trusty pack? Oh, oh, oh all right. But don't ask anyone else to carry anything. Mm. Goodbye, Wilfred. Bye, Wilfred. Take care, Goodbye. son. Bye. As they passed the store stump, Wilfred wondered what kind of adventures he was going to have. Maybe he'll be cut off by a rock slide or chased by a hungry owl. <laughs> Wilfred! Huh? This way. Sorry, Mr. Apple! And as they got to the old oak palace, Wilfred decided that one day he would write a book about his explorations. The High Hills. My mountain adventure. Ah! <gasps> At last, they reached the stepping stones where they crossed the stream. Oh, 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 oh. Steady, Wilfred. Thanks, Mr. Apple. Lunch? Yes, please. Oh, oh, oh. You know, Wilfred, you could leave some of your gear here and we could pick it up on the way back. No, thank you, Mr. Apple. If I'm going to be an explorer, and I am, I must be prepared for anything. <coughs> All right, have it your way. Are we prepared to start climbing? Oh, yeah. The sooner we leave the bottom, the sooner we get to the top. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Apple. When the mice set off again, the path quickly became steeper and steeper. <sighs> Look at that! Yes. We don't call these 
the high hills for nothing. By tea time, it was getting dark and cold, and the hills around were shrouded in mist. Wilfred didn't want to admit it, but he was uh. beginning to feel a little bit tired. <laughs> Look! A light! see you climbing all this way and with your bad leg too. We couldn't leave you without blankets now, could we? Come in, come in. Come on, come on in, come right in. Let's get you sat down. Does anybody want any more? This is the best bilberry soup I've ever tasted. <sighs> oh, it's delicious. This way, young mouse, before you fall asleep in the bread basket. <laughs> Here you go. That's it. Are you going to wake me up at dawn so we can go exploring, Mr. Apple? Oh, no, 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 no. I think we all deserve a lie-in. And then after breakfast, we'll head back home. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Head back home? If I'm going to be a great explorer, I must do some exploring. <sighs> but how? When dawn crept over the rocky hillside, there was no sign of life in the Vols' cottage. It wasn't until the sun was well up above the horizon that Vols and mice began <sighs> to stir. Oh, the sun's out! Uh, it's a hard life up here in the hills, isn't it? Oh, yes, but a good life. We wouldn't want it any other way. No, it would be nicer if it didn't get quite so cold and, and when the mist comes down, we're quite cut off. While Wilfred listened to the Voles talk about their life, he tried to work up the courage to ask if they'd ever gone exploring, if they'd ever found gold. Um... <sighs> Another delicious meal. Just what we needed. Send us on our way. That's right. Time to get back to work. But, um, Mrs. Eyebright will be wanting her new blanket. And we haven't even started it. <laughs> but uh, it was kind of you to make all those blankets for us. Very thoughtful. They'll keep the cold out, that's for sure. But, uh, but aren't we going to go exploring? I'm sorry, Wilfred, but Lily and I must get back. But you don't have to get back, do you, Mr. Apple? Well... I do, but not... Can't we do a little bit of exploring? Please? Not much, just a little. There are some fine junipers beyond the crag. And you know how Mrs Apple loves junipers. Let's go and find some for her, please. Oh. <laughs> Why not? Yes! Goodbye, then. Goodbye. And thank you. Goodbye, now. Take care. Goodbye, now. Bye! Go. Oh. Well, Fred. At last, I get to do some real exploring. Now, which way is the wind blowing? Hmm, the wind isn't blowing. So that means I'd better go... this way. I wonder how real explorers walk. Like this! Well, Fred. by Wilfred Toadflax. It was a sunny day with no wind when I started my explorations. Hmm. I wonder what's up there. W Wilfred! Oh, wait for me! Gold here, come down at once. Oh. Oh. I can't. Are you sure? Positive. Right. Then don't move. Uh, 
I'll come up and get you. Uh, oh. Oh, I really am much too old for this. No! Oh. Slowly. One paw at a time. And don't look down. Be careful, Mr. Apple! Ah! <laughs> it's all right, Wilfred. I'm almost there. Here we are. Now what? Now we find a place where it'll be easier to climb down. Follow me. Oh. 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 Be careful how you go, Wilfred. I, um, I bet this kind of thing happens to real explorers all the time. Oh. I'm sure it does, Wilfred. But don't think about that now. Just think about putting one paw in front of the other. Oh... Oh, no! This is just what we need. If only we had some rope. We ought to tie ourselves together. I've got some rope. Have you? Essential equipment for my trusty pack. Very good, Wilfred. Now, turn to the rock face, and we'll ease our way along, one paw at a time. Oh, they stayed behind. Wilfred wanted to do some exploring. I should think they'll be back just after dark. Oh, good. I'll watch for them. Primrose would be watching for a long time because her grandfather and Wilfred were nowhere near home. <sighs> At least we can see now. Yes, but it's not going to do us any good. I have absolutely no idea where we are. You don't? No. Oh. <sighs> Wilfred, I'm afraid we're going to have to spend the night on the mountain. <laughs> oh, let's hope there's some place nearby to camp. Even though Wilfred knew it would be cold and dark on the mountain, and even though he knew Mr. Apple was not exactly enthusiastic about this turn of events, he couldn't help but be excited. He was going to camp out, just like a real explorer. I think this will do. It's perfect. <laughs> if only we could make a fire. We can. Essential equipment, remember? <laughs> Whatever are you doing out here? I'm waiting for Grandpa and Wilfred to come back from the high hills. It's very dark now. You know, they probably came home a different way and are at this very moment sitting next to the fire at Crabapple Cottage while we're standing out here freezing our tails off. Uh, why didn't I think of that? Let's go. And I'm very glad that your essential equipment included food. Because all I had in my pocket were the two sandwiches the Voles gave us. It was in Sir Hogmead Horhound's book. It told me all about essential things. <clears throat> well, I think you're the most essential thing round here, Wilfred. Mr. Apple? Yes, Wilfred? Will you tell me the story about how you got your limp? Oh, Wilfred. You've heard that one a thousand times. It happened when you were out exploring, didn't it? Mm. I went off on my own, even though everyone warned me not to, because of the weasel. But you saw it, and you didn't run away. That was my first mistake. No, you ran towards the weasel because you were trying to chase it away from Brambley Hedge. That was my second mistake. 
but I didn't realize it until I felt the weasel's teeth on my leg. But you got away! Oh, Mr. Apple, you must have been awfully brave. <laughs> and now, uh, uh, I'm awfully tired. <laughs> So the two mice crawled into their little cave on the rocky ledge. As they fell asleep, the only sound they could hear was the murmur of a stream that ran through the valley below like a silver ribbon in the moonlight. at this time of night. Uh, sorry to bother you so late, Flags, uh, but... Uh, Grandpa uh, and Wilfred uh, aren't uh, back from the high hills. Did they say anything to you about a change of plan? No. But it was such a beautiful day. Perhaps they did more exploring than they meant to. And ended up spending another night with the voles. See, Betty? There's nothing to worry about. And no matter what, Wilfred is in safe paws with Pep. I think we should all go to bed. If they're not back in the morning, let's meet at the Old Oak Palace and decide then if we should take any action. <laughs> Mr. Apple! Mr. Apple, look! The mist's gone! And there's a path down the mountain! Oh, oh, oh. Okay. We have to take it slowly. My leg is... Oh. Oh. It's very sore. Here, put some of this on it. What is it? Comfrey ointment. It was part of the... Essential equipment. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> when Wilfred and Mr Apple didn't return, Mr. and Mrs. Toadflax, Mrs. Apple, Lord Woodmouse and Primrose decided to go and look for them. Flax and Lily went along to show them the way. I do hope they're all right. Of course they are. Pip is very experienced at this kind of thing. I know he'll be taking good care of Wilfred. Are you all right, Mr. Apple? <coughs> oh, it's funny how it's harder going down. Oh. Oh, then it was going up. Here, let me help. Oh, I, I, oh, oh, I'm sorry, Wilfred. But I can't go any further. Are you sure? Oh, positive. But I can't go on and just leave oh, you here. And anyway, I don't know where here is. Oh, this is all my fault. If only we hadn't gone exploring. What are we going to do? Is this the way you went yesterday? Yes. Then we crossed the stream at the stepping stones. Meanwhile, high up in the hills... Mm. Well, the way I see it, we can't go back and we can't go forward. Mm. <sighs> oh, that pretty much sums it up, Wilfred. <sighs> Wait a minute! Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to wait longer than that. I've got it! We'll sail down the stream! We'll what? Down the what? We'll sail down the stream! Yes, we'll tie these logs together to make a raft, just like real explorers. It'll be great! <laughs> uh, I'm sure it will, Wilfred. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Come on, Grandma! Let's go! Oh, not too fast now, Primrose. Oh. <laughs> there. What do you think, Mr. Apple? Oh. Oh. I think Sir Hogweed Horhound would have been proud. Really? Really, Wilfred. Ready? Ready!
them. <gasps> What's that? Just hold on a minute. There. It's a hat. <gasps> it's Wilfred's. I made it for his last birthday. Oh, no. What could have happened to them? You don't think... Wait a minute. Did you hear that? <gasps> it sounds like Wilfred. Oh, Wilfred! Look! <laughs> Primrose! It is Wilfred! Wilfred! Grandpa! We never would have made it if Wilfred hadn't been such a good explorer. Thank you, Wilfred. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Apple. It was my fault, really, for climbing up that rock looking for gold. And I found some. <gasps> Did you? Oh, let me have a look. Oh, good. Oh, where is it? Oh, Wilfred, that's not gold. It's not? No, <laughs> but it's just as valuable. Have a look, Lily. Wilfred, you found some of Great Grandpa Blackthorn's lichen. Oh. The dye we use for our wool. It's very, very rare, and we completely run out. Wilfred, this is better than gold. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wilfred. <laughs> well done. Oh, Wilfred, what an adventure. Next time, I'm going to. It was the middle of winter. The sun had just set, and it was very, very cold. An icy wind was blowing from the east, and as it blew, it softly whispered, Snow. Deep in the dark roots of Bramley Hedge, tiny lights could be seen moving hastily along, and then just as swiftly disappearing. The lights belonged to the mice who lived in Brambley Hedge. They'd heard the wind's message and were hurrying home to get out of the cold. But there was one mouse, a young mouse by the name of Wilfred Toadflags, who longed for the snow to come. And then if the snow gets really, really deep, I'm going to take you out to the top of the highest drift and we'll whoosh down faster than a flash of lightning. Faster, Faster than... than you can run to the store stump to collect some honey and clover flour from Mr. Apple. Oh, can I finish polishing my toboggan first? Not if you want fresh biscuits for tea. Biscuits? Store stump, here I come! Wilfred imagined himself an intrepid explorer on a sleek toboggan, speeding fearlessly across deep snowdrifts. Faster! Faster! Oh! oh. oh. My, my. Wilfred Toad Flax. Wherever are you going in such a hurry? Mrs. Eyebright, Lord Woodmouse, I'm really sorry. I, I was you just... You were just riding on a toboggan, weren't you? No. I mean, yes. Yeah, sort of. But how did you know... That's for me to know and for you to know, I know. Well, if this snow keeps up, as I believe it will, you'll soon be able to go tobogganing on a real toboggan. I can't wait! Do you really think there'll be a lot of snow, Lord Woodmouse? Smells like it to me. And there's a feeling in the air, just like that time long, long ago, when the snow got so deep, it went all the way to the top of the third notch on the old oak palace. Wow! If, and only if it gets that deep, will it be deep enough for a snowball. A snowball? Yes. There's only ever been one snowball. I can remember. It was held in the year Mr. Eyebright and I were married. <sighs> what a night! And what a feast we prepared! <laughs> oh, special snowball food! Food? Sorry, Mrs. Eyebright, I've just remembered I have to go to the store stump for my mother! Go carefully on that toboggan! <laughs> Later, as Wilfred and Mr. Apple left the store stump to head for home, greeted by delicious, warm smells. Wow. 
which wafted from the kitchen of Crabapple Cottage out into the crisp, cold air. Mmm, that smells good. Do you think it's going to keep snowing, Mr. Apple? I do, Wilfred. Mm. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait! I have the feeling that young Wilfred can't wait. Goodness me, if there's as much snow out there as you've brought in here... There'll be enough for a snowball. Oh. Ah. I can remember my mother talking about the last snowball. Oh, now old Mrs. Oibright's the only one of us who was actually there. And I'm sure she'll remember all the snowball recipes. I've got one for blackberry sorbet, which my mother gave me. And snowball meringues. Well, I wouldn't set my heart on blackberry sorbet or a snowball if I were you. Oh. Snow would have to come all the way up to the third notch on the old oak palace. Can you imagine that much snow? Of course. Can't you? I'm sorry. I can't think of all that cold snow when I'm sitting by our warm fire eating the best mushroom pie in Bramley Head. Next door in the hornbeam tree, the Toteflax children didn't want to think about anything but lots of cold snow. They'd been sent off to bed after a hot supper by the fire, but they were far too excited to sleep. Tobogganing tomorrow! No pancakes for tea! We'll make a snow mouse! And I'll knock it over! <laughs> hey, <let me> careful. <laughs> While Wilfred dreamt of high drifts and his shiny toboggan, the night silently slipped away, leaving behind it a thick, white blanket of snow. You're going? It's all right, Mum. We're just going out for a quick toboggan ride, and then you'll have time to make breakfast. <laughs> That's very thoughtful of you, Wilfred. Have you toboggan? <laughs> oh. Oh. Now we'll have to wait till Dad gets up and digs us out. Oh, no, we won't. I'll dig us out. Mum, guess what? We're snowed in. Wilfred said he's going to dig us out. <laughs> oh, he does, does he? Well, you just go and remind him that young mice never dig without the help of a grown-up. I'll go and get your father up. The Wilfred may have the whole hedge dug out by then. As the rest of Bramley Hedge woke up, the morning sunlight revealed that the snow was thicker than the mice had expected. All the downstairs windows and many of the upper ones were hidden in deep drifts. My, my. So, Mrs. Eyebright, what do you think? Is the snow deep enough for a snowball? It's almost up to the third notch. Almost isn't enough, Lord Woodmouse. But another snowfall should do it. Excellent. I'll keep my eye on it and report to Mr. Apple. Did you hear that, Basil? I certainly did. And it's enough for me to get my skates on. <laughs> Get my skates on. That's a good one. Well, if there is going to be a snowball, and I'll wager there is, I'll need to make my celebrated celebration punch. Hmm. <laughs> Elderberry cordial. An essential ingredient. Oh. It looks like there's some digging to be done. In every home along the hedgerow, Shovels, maps and ropes were kept in a special cupboard by the front door so that in a situation like this, the mice could dig tunnels from tree to tree. Hey! Wilfred, catch! We 
Penrose! Yeah. I should have known it was you. <laughs> it's much too dangerous out here for me. I'll go and check on the snow. <laughs> Come on, let's go to Boggany. Well, Fred, Penrose, there's going to be a very important meeting in the Star Stump in ten minutes. Please tell anyone you see to come along. Well, Fred, did you hear that? It must mean that we can... Primrose, if we don't go now and there is a snowball, we won't get a chance to toboggan <gasps> until tomorrow. Yeah, so what's wrong with tomorrow? We'd have to wait for it. I can't wait. I'm a right now sort of mouse, so I'm going tobogganing right now. Basil! Hello, Basil. Primrose, Wilfred, how nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Basil. Bye. Oh, my. And it's very nice to see that splendid toboggan. Yes. We were just about to take it on its first run. Oh, you were, were you? Mm, well, well, I was wondering if maybe before you do that, you might consider lending it to me for a moment. Uh, Not a long moment, of course, just a short one. You see, I have some more ingredients for my celebrated celebration punch at Elderbury Lodge. It's important to have the very best for the snowball. We don't even know if there's going to be a snowball. Wilfred? I'm sure Wilfred doesn't mind if you borrow his toboggan, do you, Wilfred? But Primrose! Splendid! Will you kindly look after this while I go and fetch the other boxes? Oh, this is splendid. Absolutely splendid. My toboggan. As Wilfred waited and waited and waited, he couldn't help wishing he was whooshing down the highest snowdrift. Where is Basil? You know what he's like. Come along, you two. You'll freeze your tails off out here. We can't, Mrs. Krusty Bread. We've got to look after this box for Basil. Mind how you go, Basil. You can never be too careful. <laughs> It was great. It was grand. The best drink in the land. For breakfast, supper, tea, or lunch, drink Basil's celebration punch. Come on, Wilfred. You go, Primrose. I'll wait here with Basil's box. All right. But I'll come straight back. Basil, where are you? This is not good. Not good at all. Unaware of the danger that Basil was in, the mice of Brambley Hedge gathered in the warmth and safety of the store stump. Meanwhile, Lord Woodmouse scurried through the tunnels from the old oak palace with the final snow report. Shush, everyone! Mr. Apple's going to speak! <coughs> when the snows are lying deep, when the field has gone to sleep, when the blackthorn turns to white, and frosty stars bedewel the night when summer streams are turned to ice a snowball warms the heart of mice <laughs> friends i declare that a snowball will take place tonight in the ice hall where is the ice hall dad no captain that's a good question you are going to build it. Am I? We all are. Oh. Wilfred! Wilfred! There is going to be a snowball! Tonight! Tonight? Well, I can't wait for Basil any longer. I'm going to find him and my toboggan now. But Wilfred! Primrose, where's Wilfred? Everyone's got to help with the digging. Oh, he's... Oh, never mind. I I'll go and get him. Did you find Wilfred? Primrose has gone to fetch him. So it was agreed that the mice would follow the snowball traditions of their forefathers. The first thing they had to do was find the perfect spot to build the ice hall. There was a deep drift of snow banked against the store stump and the expectant mice watched and waited. All eyes on Mr. Apple. This is... Mice, prepare to dig. As midday approached, work commenced hollowing out the middle of the drift. While deep in the tunnels, Wilfred was on a mission of his own. Basil? Basil? <gasps> oh! Wilfred! My toboggan! Don't! It could be dangerous. Where's Basil? 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 Oh! <laughs> Yes, 
yes, it's me, Basil. The snow fell in on me. I'll get some help. No, we can't wait. We have to rescue Basil now. Oh, Wilfred. Meanwhile, the rest of the mice had dug the snow from inside the drift, piled it into carts and taken it down to the stream. Just nudge the top a little to the left. The next one goes here. Isn't that right, Mrs. Eyebright? All along Bramley Hedge, kitchens and fires were hot and busy. Pies browned and sizzled, and soups, stews, and puddings bubbled, while crab apples roasted over the fire. Mrs. Eyebright, sorry to bother you when you're so busy, but.、Uh... Have you by any chance seen Wilfred? Wilfred, isn't he out with Primrose? Well, I wouldn't worry about Wilfred. <laughs> I'm freezing. Me too. We'll have to get help. You wait here. But I'm not a waiting sort of mouse, Primrose. Oh. Oh. Uh. Wilfred, don't! Whoa! Wilfred! In the ice hall, the mice of Brambley Hedge were too busy working to even notice that Wilfred, Basil, and Primrose were missing, trapped in a tunnel. Oh, 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 mind your backs now. Make way. <laughs> We have everything here but the punch, dear. I do hope Basil hasn't forgotten. You know Basil, dear. I'm sure he's just trying to decide exactly what should go into it.、Mm. And taste in what should go into it too. I shouldn't, I shouldn't wonder. wonder. <laughs> ah, ah. Basil, are you all right? As good as can be expected in these circumstances. What about you? I'm cold. If only I hadn't pulled on the toboggan. Well, you did, as usual. You just couldn't wait. I can't help it if I'm a right now sort of mouse. And right now we're stuck, and not just sort of. It'll be ages before anyone comes looking for us. It seemed that Primrose was right. By tea time, the ice hall was almost finished. The sparkling ice columns and glistening carvings were in place, and the mice were just adding the all-important finishing touches. Mr. Toeflex had fetched some glowworms from the bank at the end of the hedge、mm-hmm. to illuminate the ice hall.、Oh, you missed a spot there, Flax. Oh, oh much obliged to you. Does anybody have any more holly? I think we could use a few more sprigs here and there. Be da um da da. Is I right? Have you seen Primrose recently? Primrose? She's with Wilfred, isn't she? I wouldn't worry about Primrose. Here you are, children. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Eyebright.、Oh, oh. You haven't seen Basil, have you, Mrs. Eyebright? No, Mr. Apple, I haven't. Wherever can he be? At last, it was time for the workers to admire the fruits of their labours before going home to wash and change. <laughs> Trapped in their snowy cave, three very cold and unhappy mice weren't going anywhere. Basil was trying his best to keep everyone's spirits up. Don't worry, I'm sure they're on their way. Oh, oh. what are we going to do when all three lanterns go out? We'll wait in the dark. Waiting. Yes, Wilfred. We noticed. You'd think they would have come looking for us by now. Oh no! I don't like this. I'm sorry I ever got you two into this. <sighs> Wait a minute. Maybe if we pushed the toboggan, we could bash a hole through the snow. Why didn't we think of that before? Probably because it's not a good idea. Oh come on, Primrose. It's worth a try. I agree, and at least the exercise will warm us up. Oh, all right. Anything to get warm. Ready? One, two, three. Oh! Look! It's working. One more time. One, two, three. Push!、Oh. I think I can crawl through there. Whoa, Wilfred! Not so fast. We must prop it up first. There. Right.、Oh. Wilfred. They don't fit. I'll fit. You? You can't go. They're not old enough. Wilfred Toeflax, I don't believe you. Now, just now, said... 
Listen, Wilfred, if it hadn't been for your idea to make the hole in the first place, there wouldn't be anything for Primrose to crawl through, would there? Basil's right, Wilfred. <gasps> Off you go, Primrose, but hurry! And be careful! Using every ounce of courage she could muster, Primrose set off through the dark and deserted tunnel. Basil and Wilfred felt quite helpless and quite alone. Back at the ice hall, the guests were arriving for the snowball. As they entered, they were filled with wonder by the splendor and magnificence of the occasion. Hello, Betty. Where's Primrose? Primrose? Isn't she with you? No. I thought Primrose and Wilford were with you. But if they're not with me, and they're not with you, where are they? Oh, dear, something's happened. I know it. Wilfred and Primrose are missing. Everyone, <laughs> stop everything. <laughs> Fetch some lanterns. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll find them. Now! Who saw them last? I haven't seen them since this morning. Whatever can have happened to Where them? Where could they be? We've got to find oh, them. How quickly? Primrose, a tunnel caved in. Oh, oh, yes. Wilfred and Basil are still stuck. Oh. Just outside Elderbury Lodge. The lanterns are going out. The roof's going to cave in. Oh. In the cold, dark tunnel, Wilfred and Basil huddled together and bravely sang. They were trying to drown out the ominous creakings and groanings of the props which sounded as though they might give way at any moment under the weight of the heavy snow. Oh, breakfast, supper, supper, tea, tea or lunch. lunch. Basil, did you hear that? What's taking them so long? I hope they're all right. Of course they're all right. I think we'd rather have your punch without ice, if it's all the same to you, Basil. Wilfred! Basil! I'm so glad you're safe. So am I, Mum. Wow! Look at all this! Isn't it amazing? It certainly is. And now that we are finally all together, it's officially time for the snowball to begin. One, two, three. Supper is served. Come along, everybody. Oh, wow! This is wonderful! What a feast! Oh, I don't know. Pass the blackberry sword on you. It's not as good as mine would have been, but it'll do. Your snowball meringues are exquisite. Thank you. My mother's recipe. It's a shame you couldn't go to Bogganing today, Wilfred. It's all right, Primrose. I can wait till tomorrow. Wait? You? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one for all this dancing, but it was worth coming for the food. Oh, Alfred. Mrs. Toadflex, would you care to dance? Oh, Lord Woodmouse. I'd love to. Never dreamt I'd live to see all this again. It's. It's. Oh. Yes, Mrs. Eyebright. Oh. It's quite magnificent. The snowball went on until dawn. The musicians were tired. The ice columns began to drip. The sleepy mice could dance no more. And young Wilfred finally got to ride his beloved toboggan. The mice wandered home through the snow tunnels, climbed the stairs, and crept into their warm beds. 
Outside the window, the snow had started to fall again, but no one noticed. Every mouse in Bramley Hedge was fast asleep. It was a beautiful frosty afternoon. The air was crisp and cold. The leaves and berries sparkled in the winter sunshine. Brambley Hedge was alive with excitement as the mice prepared for that evening's traditional midwinter celebration. Merry midwinter, Dusty. Have you seen Primrose? Sorry, can't stop. Must get to the palace. What a rush everyone's in. Isn't it exciting? Yes, my dear, but we have to get that message to Primrose, I know, dear. The festivities would begin after dark when everyone gathered round the fireplace in the great hall of the old oak palace. Wow. As far as Primrose Woodmouse and Wilfred Toteflax were concerned, hauling the giant midwinter log to the fireplace and then watching it burst into flames was one of the best parts of the celebration. Make sure you tie those ropes tightly now. That's right. Those ropes have to hold all the way from here to the old oak palace. Could you grab that rope, Wilfred? Mm -hmm. Now pull. Ow! Hey, Wilfred, that's my tail. <laughs> Sorry, Teasel. <laughs> now, one, two, three, and pull. <laughs> Hello, Grandma. Grandpa, have you come to help us pull the midwinter log? Oh, no. I'm far too old and lame for that now. But believe me, when he was a young mouse, your grandpa was one of the strongest log haulers this side of the meadow. <laughs> was I really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Anyway, Primrose, your papa... Wants to see you, dear. Now? That's what he said. But why? That's what he didn't say. Do you want to come with me, Wilfred? Now? And miss hauling the log? Go on, Wilfred. We won't be ready for that for ages. Hurry now. Your father said it was very important. Last one to the old oak palace is a state! <laughs> <laughs> Basil? Hello, Wilfred. Where are you two going in such a hurry? Basil, would you come and help us with the holly? It takes so much of it to decorate the great hall. And here's some for you, Wilfred. But, Mama, we don't have time. Of course you have time. Come on, Wilfred. Get a grip and pull. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Rose. And Wilfred, too. Splendid, splendid. Something awful has happened. What? But you two could save the day. How? Poor Conker here <coughs> has lost his voice. <coughs> Can't say a thing. That's terrible. How are you going to recite the Midwinter poem? I can't. Oh, oh no. no. So... Primrose and Wilfred, will you come to our rescue and recite the midwinter poem at the ceremony this evening? Us? But I already have a job. I'm going to sit on top of the log. Wilfred, I can't believe what I'm hearing. You can sit on the log any year, every year. But, young mouse, it's a great honour to be asked to read the midwinter poem. Is it? It, it is. is. Especially this year. As Basil and Mrs. Eyebright and I will be telling the story of Cumulus Nimbus, the Ooh. mouse who wrote the poem. It's a wonderful story, and we tell it so well. I love the part where Princess Rosa... She was one of my uh, ancestors. <laughs> very distant, of course, but she may have lived in this very oak. The part where Princess Rosa... And Cumulus Nimbus. Oh, I like him. He was the first mouse to leave Brambley Hedge to go exploring. And he sent back letters to Princess Rosa, his bride-to-be. Or so the story goes. Oh. Oh. <gasps> I wish it were true. True or not, my favourite part of the story is the midwinter poem. Which means someone has to recite it, Wilfred. And that someone is us. Uh, I like coming to the rescue. But we don't know it properly. Well, let's go and practice then. Come on, we haven't got much time. Right, 
No one will bother us here. When the days are the shortest, the nights are the coldest. When the days are the shortest, the nights are the coldest. Ah. Uh, uh, ah. Now. Uh, mm, too heavy. Now too light. Ah. Ah. This'll do nicely. Right. Now let's try it again. When, when the, the days, days are the shortest. <laughs> How are you getting on? Don't mind me. Oh, this is hopeless. We could go back to the log. I wonder if they've finished tying it up yet. Oh, really, Wilfred? We can't give up so easily. All we have to do is find a place to practice. Let's go and ask Mama. Here's another batch ready for the oven, Mrs. Crusterbread. Right you are, Lady Daisy. Oh, 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 I don't know how we manage to eat so much, but we always do. <laughs> as Primrose and Wilfred enter the palace kitchen, their noses twitched with delight as the wonderful smell of hot blackberry and honey wafted towards them. Primrose's mother, Lady Woodmouse, was baking midwinter biscuits. Hello, Hello Mrs. Mrs. Crusterbread! <laughs> Primrose, Wilfred, isn't it wonderful that you'll be reciting the Midwinter Poem? What an honour. That's what everyone keeps saying. But, Mama, we can't find anywhere quiet to practice. <laughs> well, Midwinter is not a quiet kind of day. Wait your backs, here I come. Why don't you try the attic storerooms? There's no reason for anybody to be going up there. That's a brilliant idea. Thanks, Mama. Why don't you take some biscuits and blackberry juice up with you in case you get hungry? <gasps> That's an even more brilliant idea. Thank you, Mrs. Krusty Bread. <whistles> wow! Look at all this. Mama's right. It's the perfect place to practice. Let's see. When the days are the shortest, the nights are the coldest. Was this yours? Hmm? Oh, yes, but I grew out of it ages ago. Hmm. Now you say, the frost is the sharpest, the year is the oldest. Wilfred? Wilfred! Hang on, I want to see what's in here. Wilfred, we don't have time. Oh, it's just a bunch of letters. Ooh. Oh, they look really old. Want a biscuit? Before I eat them all? Uh, no, thanks. I wonder what else is in here. What's this? A key! Hey, Primrose, isn't there something in the poem about dressing up? And dress in your richest and finest and best. I'll do that part! <laughs> and dress in your richest and finest and best. Hey, Primrose, where does this go? I don't know. Let's open it. Oh. oh, I can't. It's locked. Oh, I can see some stairs. Wilfred, if there's a keyhole, there must be a key. And I think I just might have it here. Oh, it fits. Their hearts were pounding with excitement and fear as they peered into the darkness. Where would the long, winding staircase lead them to? Sh shall we see what's at the top? Um, oh. Oh! Come on! The light slowly faded as the midwinter afternoon gently gave way to the evening. An evening filled with excitement and promise. Mr. Toadflax, Dusty, Conker and Flax had started hauling the log to the great hall, encouraged by Mr. and Mrs. Apple, Basil and old Mrs. Eyebright. Keep going! You're almost there! Mm, it's a very good log this year. It'll make a lovely hot blaze. I can't say I blame young Wilfred for not wanting to miss this. It's still my favourite part of the celebration. My favourite part is that first cup of your famous midwinter punch. <laughs> Just as we light the fire. Oh, Mrs. Eyebright, you are too, too kind. Meanwhile, up in the attics, Primrose and Wilfred climbed the secret stairs not having the faintest idea where they would end up. 
suddenly the stairs came to an abrupt end, leaving them facing a mysterious door. I wonder what's through there? Well, there's only one way to find out. Wow! As the door opened, the young mice stared about them in amazement. They were standing in a most magnificent room. It seemed very, very old. Everything was covered in dust, and the air smelled musty and strange. Where are we? I don't know. I've never been here before. Maybe your ancestors lived here in the olden days. Wilfred, look at these. They're just right for tonight. Oh, and dress in your richest and finest and best. I wonder where that goes. Well, there's only one way to find out. As Primrose and Wilfred set off to explore the secret rooms, far below them, the log procession approached the old oak palace. It's time for the song. Basil, give us a note to start on. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What, what is, is it, Basil? Oh, I brought my lantern but left my fiddle back at the lodge. I won't be long. Oh, don't hurry, Basil. We like sitting up here. Yes. <laughs> we can sit up here all night. Yes. <laughs> What's this? Basil. <laughs> Merry, merry midwinter! Oh, oh, oh. oh, and a merry midwinter to you too, Teasel. <laughs> well caught, Pet. <laughs> Up in the attics, far away from the festivities below, Primrose and Wilfred had found a whole suite of secret rooms. There was a dining room, a butler's pantry, a small kitchen and several bedrooms, including a beautiful nursery. This is amazing! Whoever lived here had a lot of toys and a lot of clothes. Wilfred, you could wear that tonight. It's perfect for our poem. Mm. What else is in there? Who wore these things? What about this? <laughs> Look at this! Oh, I bet that one itches. Oh, yes. Let me try this on. I want to see what we look like. Tell them where we got these costumes. This place could be our secret. Good idea. And now let's practice. I'll start and then you come in. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when the days are the shortest, the nights are the coldest. The frost is the sharpest, the year is the oldest. It is awfully dark, isn't it? Do you know, Primrose, I can hardly see you. Winter log is here already. Roast the chestnuts. Feed the wine. Pass the cups along the line. Gather round the log burns bright. It's warm as toast inside tonight. Have you seen Primrose and Wilfred? They missed the procession. It'd be a shame for them to miss the lighting of the log. I haven't seen them since they went off to the attic storeroom to practice. <laughs> Don't worry. They'll soon be down when they hear all the noise. Here's the bramble wine for the log, Basil. Thank you, Mrs. Apple. Merry Midwinter! <laughs> We're going to light the log now. If we don't get back down there, we'll miss it. Come on. Um, here, put this on. Oh. oh. This way. Huh? Oh. Over here. Uh, uh, what's, 
Wasn't it over here? Well, I think it was this door. Oh. Primrose! This way! Primrose, how do we get out of here? While Primrose and Wilfred were desperately trying to find their way out of their bewildering attic prison, down in the Great Hall, the midwinter celebration was about to begin. As the mice watched Mrs. Eyebright lean over to thrust the taper into the fire, their thoughts turned to the coming spring, to trees bursting into blossom to the first warm rays of sun and to the welcome song of birds returning home. <laughs> to spring! To spring! spring. <laughs> the bright flames licked the mossy bark of the log. Oh, let the feast begin! Oh, they're all homemade. <laughs> Come on, my dears. Come on now. I'm beginning to worry about Primrose, dear. She and Wilfred couldn't still be in the attics, could they? Would you like me to go and fetch them? Mm. Yes, please. Consider it done, my dear. It's no use. We'll never get out of here. And no one will ever find us, because no one knows about the secret staircase. Oh. Primrose? Primrose? Wilfred? Well, they obviously finished practicing. They must be somewhere downstairs, waiting for their big moment. Well, I don't understand it. We got in here, so why can't we get out? I don't know. What are we going to do? Oh. Ah! 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 <laughs> the first one to entertain us tonight will be Dusty Duckwood. I will now do my famous three acorns and a hollyberry trick. Oh, so that's what he's been up to. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Have you found them? They're not in the attic, so they must be waiting to make an entrance. <laughs> Well juggled. And now, it's time for me to show you my famous shadow pictures. Ooh. Guess what this is. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I see there's been a change to the order of entertainment. I, um, I, um, I am now proud to present Primrose and Wilfred. Who? Oh, um. <sighs> when the days are the shortest, the nights are the coldest. The frost is the sharpest. The year is the oldest. Then polish your whiskers and tidy your nest. And dress in your finest and richest and best. For winter has brought you the worst it can bring. And now it will give you the, the promise, promise of, of spring. spring. Oh. <laughs> Didn't they recite well? What lovely hats. You're next, dear. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
<coughs> it's very difficult to follow such an excellent recitation, but follow it we must. <coughs> we have our beloved midwinter poem thanks to an extraordinary mouse named Cumulus Nimbus. The famous explorer. As we all know, Cumulus was supposed to return from his long journey away from Brambley Hedge on Midwinter's Day to make Princess Rosa his bride. But as the day progressed, it seemed less and less likely that Cumulus would arrive. After the Midwinter Supper, when the mice entertained each other, as we have been doing tonight, Rosa decided to read a poem that Cumulus had sent her. Just as she got to the final line, and now it will give you the promise of spring, there was a flurry of snow in the hall, and a cloaked figure appeared. <coughs> oh, my word. <coughs> it was Cumulus. And so Cumulus married the princess. Oh. And they lived they they happily, happily, happily ever after. like thinking that it's true. I know, Poppy. But unfortunately, there's never been any proof. Just a moment. Look at these! What? what the, the, these are the letters from Cumulus. What? Uh, what do I see here? The poem. The midwinter poem. <gasps> Primrose, where did you find these? Oh. Just up in the attic. That's where we found these costumes, too. Oh, look! You're wearing the same clothes as in their portrait. How extraordinary! Where did you say you found them? Oh, um... Grandpa, when are you going to do your shadow pictures? I hope we didn't miss them. No, you did not. Uh, may I borrow that cloak, Wilfred? Of course. First of all, I'm going to do... A, a bat! <laughs> As Mr. Apple entertained the mice with his shadow pictures, Primrose and Wilfred gazed at the fire and thought of all the lovely games they would play in Princess Rosa's palace at the top of the secret staircase. Soon their heads began to nod, and in no time at all, they were both fast asleep. <laughs>